Okay, so in this video we're going to introduce the idea of a transition matrix um, and all we're going to do in this video is look at how we can construct the transition matrices. In the um, subsequent two videos we'll look at solving problems involving transition matrices. The video to come after this will be quite a long video, there's quite a long a lot of content to talk about and then there'll be another sort of moderate video after that um, and that will bring us to the end of the matrices module. Um, which is really, you know, this section, um, these three videos combined together really to be about the transition matrix or transition matrices element of the course, which I must say I think is quite a significant part of the matrices module. Okay, so transition matrices um, are used when we're working with something called a Markov system or a Markov chain. And Andre Markov was a Russian mathematician who obviously um, devised this process of representing um, these sorts of situations. Um, I'm sure he did other mathematical things as well. Um, Markov chains are used to model systems where there are two possible states. Now, depending on the problem, you know, that might be things that could be on or off or A or B or for or against or yes or no, whatever it might be. Okay, so two possible set, head or tail, whatever it might be. Um, at each stage, a fixed proportion remains in the same state and a fixed proportion changes state. So if your transitions are about on and off, Every, every hour, for example, depending on the problem, you might find that, you know, 80% of all the switches stay on, who, that were on stay on, but 20% that were on switch off. And there would be the same numbers or different numbers, sorry, for you might find that, you know, 70% of the switches that were off stay off, but and 30% of the ones that were off turn on, okay? And so you have this constantly changing system um, where things are, that you've got switches that are either on or off, um, and, and a certain proportion of them either change or stay the same um, every time period. Um, so Markov chains and transition matrices allow us to investigate systems of this nature. So what we want to look at today is just how do we construct the transition matrix that describes those changes um, and then in the subsequent video we will look at um, how we then use that transition matrix to model what's happening in the, syst in the system. Okay, so let's consider the following example. We have a group of delivery trucks that transfer goods between two warehouses, A and B. They start the day at either warehouse and finish the day parked at one of those warehouses. Okay, so um, in this case, the two states are warehouse A and warehouse B. The trucks are either at warehouse A or warehouse B. Um, and some of them will start at warehouse A and still finish at warehouse A, so they won't change state, but others um, will start at warehouse A and end up at warehouse B. And same is true for, of the trucks that start at warehouse B. This diagram shows us what happens. Okay, so what we see here is that um, of the trucks that start at warehouse A, 0.3 or 30% of them end up at warehouse B, but 70% of them end up back at warehouse A. Okay. Whereas of the trucks that start at warehouse B, 40% of them end up at warehouse A and the remaining 60% of them end up returning to warehouse B. Okay, So we call this a transition diagram, um, which tends to usually look something like this. And from the diagram we can learn the following statement. So what percentage of trucks start and finish the day at warehouse A? So that would be this 0.7. Okay, 70% of trucks start and finish the day at warehouse A. Um, what percentage of trucks start and finish the day at warehouse B? So that would be this 60% of trucks start and finish the day at warehouse B. 30% of trucks start the day at which warehouse and finish the day at which warehouse? Here's the 30%. So 30% is going in this direction. So the trucks that start at A and finish at B. So 30% of trucks start the day at warehouse A and finish the day at warehouse B. And then 40%, here's the 40% here, start at warehouse B and end up at warehouse A. Okay, we could represent that information in a transition table, which might look something like this. The transition um, from warehouse A and B is at the top of the table and to warehouse A and B is here. So we know that 70% of trucks go from A to A, 40% of trucks from B to A. Okay, we know that 30% of trucks go from A to B and 60% of trucks go from B and stay at B. Okay. 
We can then represent that information in a transition matrix, simply by taking these numbers in the table and representing them as a two by two matrix. Okay, 0 0.7, 0 0.4, 0 0.3 and 0.6. Where we're dealing with two state transition matrices or two state Markov chains, which is all we're going to look at in further maths, our transition matrix will be a two by two matrix. Okay, if we have more than two states, um, then we, if we had three states, there were three warehouses, A, B and C, we would find we have a three by three matrix. Okay. Uh, actually, we might look at some larger ones, but um, yeah, sorry, in, in certain examples, we might consider some slightly bigger ones. The key thing, this is most important, when you construct your transition matrix, it must be done so that the columns add to one. Okay, it, it must be, the numbers must be ordered so that the columns add to one. So here, if we add 0 0.7 and 0 0.3, we get one. If we add 0 0.4 and 0 0.6, we get one. Okay. If your numbers or information are included at every, given as percentages, 70%, 30%, we would usually still in the transition matrix write the numbers as decimals rather than 70% and 30% in the transition matrix, we would write 0 0.7 and 0 0.3. Now I know 70% is equal to 0 0.7, they are exactly the same thing, but conventionally we would, wouldn't normally write the percentages um, in the transition matrix, though it's not impossible to do so, and we tend to just go with the decimals. So what that means is because the columns have to add to one, usually when you're reading the information out of a transition matrix, it's a little bit backwards to how we've done it in some of our, of our other problems before now. So when we've looked at the dominance and things, we've generally, say for example, we had three players, A, B and C and A, B and C in a dominance matrix. Okay, um, This number three here would suggest that C beat B three times. Okay. However, in a transition matrix, like what we've got here, we've got warehouse A and warehouse B and warehouse A and warehouse B, what we're seeing is that we read it this way, okay? From matrix, uh, from warehouse B to warehouse A is 40%, okay? There will usually be information around the, the matrix to confirm that. So it will say from AB and to AB over here or something like that, okay? But the key thing is the only way that you get the columns to add to one is if you do it in that direction. If we had decided instead to um, make this, we're going from matrix, uh, from warehouse A and B to warehouse A and B this way, so we know from A to A is 70%, that would be 0 0.7. From A to B um, is 30%. From B to A, um, we get 40%. And from B to B, we get 60%. We would have this problem that our columns don't add to one. Okay, So it has to go the other way for the columns to add to one. And the columns need to add to one in order for the maths to work when we start multiplying these transition matrices. Um, by other matrices, by state matrices along the way. Okay, let's construct a couple of transition matrices ourselves, one from a diagram and one just from text. So represent the information in each of the following as a transition matrix, okay? So remember when we build our transition matrix, we've got two states A and B, so it's gonna be A and B and A and B, and it will be from A or B up here to A or B here. So thinking about the numbers data moving this way, okay? So from A to A is going to be 0.32. You can see that in the diagram. From B to A, so from B to A is there, 0.45. From A to B, so from A to B, 0.68. Good, they add up to one, okay. And we could therefore just fill in with adding up to one. We know that has to be 0.55, but we can also see it from the diagram from B to B is 0.55, okay? So our columns both add to one, which means our matrix is correct. Um, and we have constructed our transition matrix. Okay, part B. There are a number of train carriages operating between two depots, North Depot and South Depot. At the end of each week, 40% of the carriages that started at North Depot end up at South Depot, and 25% of the carriages that started at South Depot, South Depot end up at North Depot. Okay, so we've got our matrix, we've got um, North and South Depots, North and South Depots. We're going from these depots to these depots, okay? So let's have a look at each number. 40% of the carriages that started at North Depot end up at South Depot. So 
starting at North Depot, ending up at South Depot. Okay, so that's going to be this number here. So that's going to be 0.4. Remember, we write a decimal rather than a uh, percentage. Then we know the columns have to add up to one. So that makes this has to be point means that 60% of the um, carriages that start at North Depot must stay at North Depot. Okay, so we, we actually only need to be given two of the numbers to be able to fill out the other numbers. Um, the second bit of information is that 25% of the carriages that started at South Depot ended up at North Depot. So from South to North is 25%. So we're going to have, oops, sorry, drop my pen. We're going to have 0.25 here, and again, columns need to add to one, and so we must have 0.75 here for the trend for this to be a transition matrix. Okay, let's just do um, some brief practice putting together transition matrices. This is a very short exercise, so you should be able to then, once you've um, done that, move straight on to the next video, which as I've warned, will be a much longer video. There's, um, it's hard to divide this into two equal portions. It's a very short one here, and then a much uh, longer one to follow.